opinions and seemingly outrageous comments expressed in this program are based on the Holy Spirit leading of a man called Coach. I gotta ask you this out there, Christian America. It's time for Pass the Salt with a coach, Dave Daubenmeyer. Hey, good uh, Wednesday morning. What is it? The 22nd of August, 2018. Lord's not making another day like it. Hey, I got invited to Florida. I got invited to Florida. They said, come on down here. Put a, put a, uh, 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 a huddle on down here. Josh Mann, his little brother, Justin, invited us to Florida. Now, what's, what's, what are you waiting on? Get one organized in your town. Tanya, Tanya sent me all kinds of information. She was a great guest yesterday, by the way. She sent me a lot of information on possible hotels and venues we can rent and all that kind of stuff. Folks, this isn't, this isn't hard to do. And I want to promise you this. There are more people who think like you around you than what we even understand. And ultimately, all politics are local. And if we're going to if we're going to have any impact at all, we're going to have to get organized now. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. So I, re- I, I replied to, to Justin this morning. Let's get this thing set up down in Florida because uh, wouldn't, hey, we could all go down to Florida for an event. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be good? But that doesn't matter. We need to we, we need we get we got to get organized here. And I hate to continue to beat that drum, but man, that, I'm thinking while we diddle, while we diddle, I want you to know something that the, those deplorables, the left, hey, folks, they ain't home sucking on their thumb, man. They are planning and scheming even right now. The kings that we read it yesterday in Psalm in Psalm 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Well, it's against the Lord and his anointed. Who do you think his anointed are? Right there it is. The kings of this earth set themselves. Boy, what does that mean? To set themselves. Huh? Wow. Hmm. Set themselves, I wonder, in high places. They set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. For what? Against the Lord and against his anointed. Listen, folks. They can scheme all they want to against the Lord. They ain't going to get them anywhere. But when they scheme against his anointed, they have the opportunity at that point to make a difference. And they scheme against the Lord's anointed by scaring us and telling us that we're not strong enough and we're not smart enough. And uh, they're going to eat you alive. All that stuff through fear. The, the devil always operates through fear. Always operates through fear. Now, we got a lot to be afraid of. And I'm going to some stuff I'm going to talk about today. There's a lot to be afraid of. Do you have any idea how easy it is for them to break you through the criminal justice system? Does anybody have any idea? I, somebody, in, the, in the queue this morning, somebody was talking about, uh, in the huddle, I'm, before we came on, the Hagmans got banned 30 days on YouTube last night. 30 days. Now, what's their recourse? Isn't there supposed to be some legal recourse here? Our criminal justice system is so screwed up. I'm going to, Roger, you may want to, you may want to bug out of here for the day. I'm going, to, I'm going to dig into some of this stuff. And then we have to understand that that's the way that the kings of this world, of the earth, are setting themselves against the Lord and anointing and, and, and tying us up through the legal system or the lack of justice system, whatever it is. A lot, lot of things to talk about. A lot, man, I got, Lord, just direct me here. Chad's having an event down in Texas. The Texas Salt and Light Brigade, they're up and at it. Rob Pugh's working his hind end off up there in Wisconsin. We got Tanya working her hind end. I don't know if you should say that about a woman. Is that, is that sexist? Working her tail off out in, out in uh, Bethlehem, PA, to get that thing organized. I hear from I, do, Dr. Roof. I'm sorry. I haven't gotten back to you. I got two guys out in Iowa that want us to come out there. I got an invite to Los Angeles. We got an invite. Well, I think it's Los Angeles. Land of the fruit and the nuts. I heard from, I heard from, uh, I just said in Florida, Lowell says, what are we doing here in Ohio? Good stuff. Good things are happening, folks. But listen, well, somebody, we got the man up, and they're going to be casualties. We're in war. There's going to be casualties. It's it's reality of it. Chad's having a big event down there in, in uh, I call it Temple, Texas, although it's moody, I think. Chad's kind of moody. And listen, he needs to know if you're coming. If you're down there and you're coming, he needs to know. It's September 14th through the 16th. He says, please, he sent an email to all the people down there. But if some of you, 
Maybe he didn't get the email down. He calls it the Estes Ranch. They're having a huddle September 14th through the 16th. Michelle and I are going to be there. And Chad says, listen, I need to know if you're coming. He's got to buy food. He's got to buy. Well, I just, he's got to get prepared. So first of all, why aren't you going? If you're down in that area, why aren't you going? So, well, it's, it's, coach, it's four hours and it'll cost me $100. Yeah. And they're stealing the future of your grandkids as you sit on your ass at home. Sorry about that. That word's in the Bible. If you think we're going to win without a little bit of sacrifice, uh, huh, come on, man. Come on. So first of all, get it on your calendar and get there. And second of all, let Chad know you're coming. And, you know, we got all kinds of excuses. I'll, I'll, we all do. They're coming to take me away. Ha, ha, ho, ho. They're coming to take me away. We laugh about it, but it's the truth. And I probably shouldn't show this, although I'm going to show it because I just, I just think I want to show it. Chad, um, hey Tony, I apologize ahead of time if if you didn't want if you didn't want me to share this. Tony, Tony Sumner from uh, Kiwi Land, what's the name of that? New Zealand sent me an email. Jared, did I, I think I sent it? Pull that thing up there for me. This this just kind of inspires me. Hey guys, Scripture says to work while the sun shines, because the day cometh when no man can work. Right now is the time. To work, not when they got their, not when they got their tentacles around us. Now is the time to work. Now is, <clears throat> and as I started to say, we're all just one lawsuit away from destruction. That's what the left does, Lord. That no evil be false, no plague can wet near our dwelling, Lord. I thank you that there's no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. Every tongue rising in judgment against us shall be condemned. We plead that we're under the blood of Jesus. And as your warriors, you said that we would go forth and you would be with us. You would never leave us. You would never, ever fail us. You would never desert us. And Lord, we stand on that in Jesus' name. So I got this from, from Tony yesterday from New Zealand. It says, Coach, thanks for noting us, noticing us. And we're going to the trouble of calling the JR show. Both Simon and I were blown away. I've had a lot of Christians say a lot of things over the years, but that's about it. No action. But you guys are the real deal. And I've realized while well, you have an interest in What's going on, on here in New Zealand, the bigger plan was to encourage us to endangered flightless Kiwis not to retreat, but to continue to fight, find other orphans. It's JR's term, church orphans. Those have been thrown out of the church and build the team. Both you and JR got under my skin, so I got busy straight away and started to set up a website yesterday. Surprisingly, my 15-year-old homeschooled son has a few clues and now has a new project. Is actually pretty good at it. Not as easy as it sounds, but on the way. Stand by. So uh, Tony starting a website on what they're doing down there at the Salt and Light Brigade in, in uh, Land Down Under, the Land Down Under, New Zealand. We have a lot to consider here as though it's much worth fighting for once we gather our thoughts. JR has offered to help. Yada, yada, yada. It's really good. And race ahead 100 miles an hour. Not really sure how to proceed. I do want <clears throat> you scroll down here. I'm sorry. I do want to be like Moses who said to the Lord in Exodus 33, 15. Listen to this, folks. If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish us from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, hey, dude, I'm going to do the very thing you asked me because I'm pleased with you and know you by name. How about that? The Lord is true to his word, even in his answer to prayer with the blessings that you show. Praise God. I say all. Of that gave me a good quick, uh, good kickstart with an email going out to the new Salt Light boys and link them to a new site. Oh, and your show today again showed the power. I think you guys call it silent revival, active Christianity. I started picking up the orphans, men that realize that open my eyes are more than I realize. So this, I'm not going to read the rest of it. It's a great, oh, oh this is good. John Ramirez, who we talked about at the Hear the Watchman conference, Tony quoted him, says, I remember John Ramirez said, I remember when I was a warlock in the demon world. We used to have these meetings once a year. You listening? John Ramirez telling us about the evil. Those, those guys who do what? Conspire together against the Lord and his anointed. John Ramirez says, I remember when I was a warlock in the demon world. We used to have these meetings once a year coming together to take over the spirit world, attacking, dismantling, and paralyzing everything that had to do with good that was opposed, that opposed evil. This is John Ramirez talking about these guys would gather together. We would destroy anything that was ready to give birth spiritually 
so that it would not manifest and not allow that person to fulfill their destiny. Whatever region, whatever domain, whatever city or county or community or people or church, before they reach their peak, we would kill it and cut it off at the root. The evil side doing that. He goes on to say that the church were to come together to fight the good fight against the kingdom of darkness. This would be a wake-up call to all the people. Wow. You don't have time to read the rest of it. Tony, we're with you, man. We're going to fight together on this. Jared, do you have the picture of the Kiwi? I think I sent you that one, too. I, I sent you a bunch of stuff. Okay, where is it? You have the picture of the Kiwi you can throw up there, Jared? I didn't know what a Kiwi is. You guys know what a Kiwi is? They call people from New Zealand a Kiwi. Well, there it is. Kiwi doesn't have any wings. <laughs> Do you know that? It's a bird that can't fly. Doesn't have any wings. Tony says that's like the church. That's the church. We become just, we just become prey for our predators. Well, dudes, let's grow some wings and grow some other things. Let's stand up and push back. So there you go, Tony. What's the point I'm making? Folks, we're making progress. We're, we're dangerous to the enemy. Okay? We're dangerous. So uh, I just want to encourage all of you out there. Invite us. We'll come. We'll do it. Somebody come in here real quick. Chad, you have anything to add? Anybody have anything to add? I got so much stuff I want to throw down our throat here today. Come on, it's 44 of you in here, Shirley. Somebody's got something to say. Oh, I need to get some. Go ahead, Jeff. I need to print up some business cards because uh, I'm on the most unchanged state here. It is rough. But you know, Jeff, there are others too, don't you? There are others like you. We just, we just haven't connected. See, you know, right. you're, not, you're not alone. You just think you are. You're not alone. Yes. That's the trick that they're using. They think that you think you're isolated. They think, oh, it's only me. There's only one person. There's only one thing. And there's nothing I can do. That's what they want. They want you hopeless. Folks, not, hopeless. Only that. Not, on, not, not only that. Not only that. That's part of the propaganda coming from the media that you're, that you're deplorable and Trump is the worst guy in the world. And if you support Trump, you are a bigot and a homophobe. They were trying to silence you. Let me tell you something. Over 68 million people voted for Donald Trump. All right, and that number's going up, Coach. And they're all around. They're, that number's going up. They're all around you. Do not pay any attention to what the media is telling you. I'm telling you right where you live that there are people right where you live waiting for somebody to stand up and organize something. Right where you live, promise you that. So be encouraged. I'm hearing from I'm hearing from people every day. Uh, you know, this whole thing, it's going, going down with Manafort and, and uh, what's the other guy's name? Cohen. Listen, folks, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait, okay? Uh, help me out. Somebody help me out here. Wasn't this about Russia? Wasn't this investigation about Russia? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Say and, and yeah. who, of you, who of you out there? Any of you, if they turn the batteries of attorneys loose on you, and oh, I just I see the picture. Could it, could any of you survive? Well, well, of course, if we're honest, you'd have a chance, but it's not. It's not yes. really corrupt. I'm, I'm going. To, I'm going to go there today, Vinny. That's where I'm going today. Yeah, Jared, go, Jared. The whole system is designed that you're always doing something illegal, so they can always find something on you. That's just, that's where we are, right? I mean, that's where it is. Every. Hey. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to come off what Jared said. I, I just did a state level three weeks ago. I Google searched to see how many bills were brought forth. There was 12,000 bills in the state of Louisiana that were proposed to be new laws. What he's saying is exactly it. There are laws out there that we don't even know that they exist. And so that's right. they, they can get us at any time on anything. Dale, that's exactly, that is exactly where we are. That's the point that I'm trying to make. This, see, the only way they can bring down the Hag Hagmans, they know this, is through litigation. Sue and make them defend themselves. Hey, that, hey coach. That, that, that is their weapon of warfare. That's one of the things they do. Yeah, go ahead. But the federal government also is using your money to go Amen. after you. <laughs> Amen. It's unbelievable, isn't it? So you're, pay you're paying actually twice. You pay taxes. <laughs> But then you also pay a lawyer to help defend yourself. 
or or how wicked is that or to prosecute you right right exactly and they're unlimited in their sources they are so let's go to let's go real quickly here so that you guys say well coach is talking about he's talking about non-biblical christian stuff i didn't turn in to hear all these politics you fool you fool how do you think they're how do you think they're crushing christianity you fool because the churches aren't talking about it the churches are not the watchmen in the churches are not making the people aware of the schemes of the enemy that what is it dare i say it again the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed boys and girls i'm his anointed you're his anointed the kings of the earth are taking counsel together to shut you up. And the churches won't talk about it because why? They've already been shut up. They've hey, already been yeah. shut up. And coach, They're just afraid. go back to go back to American history and see where the influence to write the Declaration of Independence with 18 biblical violations that came from the pulpits in the 1770s or um, 1730s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. That's where they got the inspiration for the revolution was from the pulpits, not no more. Amen. No. Amen. Amen. No, not anymore. You know why? Because we love our lives too much. I got an, I got an email from some, uh, uh, I'm going to say this in a nice way. I got an email yesterday from, from a supporter, and the email went on and on and on about how brave I am. And I'm thinking, what? Brave? What? I just sit here behind a, mic, a camera and a microphone, and I just tell the truth. That's bravery? What's wrong with us? This is bravery? I guess right. it is. I right. guess it is, isn't it? It is right. bravery. Because every time I open my mouth, the kings of this world conspire against me. And how are they? Lord, I'm, Lord I, this is under the blood. My words are under the blood, Lord. Now. If they were to have their way, which they do not in Jesus' name, they would litigate me into, into hell. They would litigate me into jail. They would, all of you, they would do it. They're doing it to the Hagmans. They're doing it to Alex Jones. They're doing it, and what are they doing it with? They're litigating you, as Paul just said, with our own stinking money. There's no justice. There's no justice. Isaiah 59. And the Lord ain't happy about it, boys and girls. The Lord's not happy about it. And I watched what happened with Ken Hoven back, back however many years ago when we got Ken Hoven out of jail. And how the church hid because the church certainly didn't want to bring any attention to itself. It might violate some 501c3 or something like that. Oh, no, no, no. The church didn't want any controversy. Church didn't mind watching their brother hang an effigy. Didn't bother him. They found a reason to throw him to the walls. Oh, you can always you can always point and peck and poke. Yeah, Trump silence some woman. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you silence some woman? If you need Jared, I got ahead of myself. No, I'll stay right here. I'm uh, yeah, feeling this this morning. Go ahead. How come how come the Lord can hate it but we're not allowed to? Well, <laughs> We did a show on that, didn't we? How come we don't hate what the Lord hates? How come, how I believe, come, huh? I believe that's in Psalms. David wrote, and I shall hate that which the Lord hates, and I will love that which the Lord loves. Yeah, ben, we don't hate. We're not allowed to hate. We're Christians. We're not allowed to hate. Not in allowed Ephesians to. chapter 6, it says, be angry, but don't let the sin go down on your wrath. I mean, that, like that one, too? Yeah, I like that one. And you know what? Here's the truth. I just know this. If they come after me, I'm just, I'm just a, right now I'm just a, a, a tadpole flopping around in a pond thinking I'm important. But if they come after me, do you have any idea how many people will applaud Christians? And do you know how many Christians will, will, will consider me guilty simply based on whatever charges they would bring? Somebody say amen. You know that, you know that's the way it operates. Amen, come on, brother. Come on down in Louisiana, Coach. We, we do yeah. things a little bit different down here. We'll, we'll take care of you. You get my point, though, right? Mm -hmm. He's a, so well, I knew there was something crooked about that guy. I, I knew. I knew. See, here's the difference. Hey. I understand authority. I understand authority. And better understand this, folks. The federal government's not above the Lord. 
Absolutely when I, not. When I die and I stand in the court of courts, I'm not standing in the Supreme Court. I'm standing in the Supreme Court. You understand? I'm not before the Supreme Court of the United States. I'm standing before the Supreme Being. And when I stand before the Supreme Being, he ain't going to care whether or not I obeyed the courts. You guys better hear what I'm telling you. Amen, You're brother. not going to care about that. He said, oh, so you, so, so the Lord's going to say to me, oh, coach, so you compromised on, on your beliefs and on your values just because you didn't want those courts to get after you? I said, well, Lord, every pastor I knew of told me I had to obey them. He said, yeah, but they were killing babies. Yeah, I know, Lord, but pastor so-and-so and pastor too good, they told me Romans 13, I had to obey them. Yeah, but coach, you knew not only were they killing those babies, but they were taking those little body parts and they were selling them. Oh, yeah, but I know that, Lord, but I had Romans 13. It's right there. Paul said, I got to gotta obey him. You understand? You understand when you stand before the Lord, all of those flimsy excuses, all those flimsy legal excuses you have, they ain't going to be worth nothing, man, when you stand before him. Because it says in righteousness, he's going to judge, he's going to make war. Hey, coach. And we all need to take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah, Dale. Revelations 21 and verse 8 is the key, act, the, the key to what you just said. And it says, but for the cowardly and the unbelieving. Amen. And the abominable. Talking about those who will not enter the kingdom of God. The first <clears throat> ones that he identifies with are the cowardly. Who are the cowardly? Judgment comes at the house of the Lord first. Amen, brother. brother. Fearful and unbelieving. Fearful and unbelieving. The cowardly and the unbelieving are two different groups of people. You have the unbeliever, but the first ones are the cowardly. Who are the cowardly? Oh, I know that you were a demanding master. I went and buried my talent. God said, you wicked fool. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Lord, I want. I wanted to help. I wanted to help get God back in the schools, but Lord, well, oh Lord, they they just threatened to sue me, and I was going to lose my house, and my car. I couldn't. Lord, I'm sorry. That that's what we're, we're going to look like fools. We look like fools when we stand before Him. You know, we are. Now, I'm not trying to get any of you in trouble, but if you think that you're going to fight, let what? Hey, pardon me. Let me put my glasses on here again. Um, the kings of this earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. If you think that you're going to fight for the Lord and you ain't going to get drugged through the mud and have accusations made against you and legal charges brought to you, if you, well, hey, dude, that, <laughs> you ain't realistic. You know why? Devil plays for keep. Those rulers play for keeps. All they got is this world. And the things of this world and the attractions of this world, they play for keep. And you know what the trade off is? You're trading off, you're, you're compromising away truth and your duty to stand up for truth for a little bit of comfort. Coach, there's a line in the movie, it's called I Believe. And the paramedic was being brought before the court, and he, he had said, you know, I always wondered if I was brought before the courts, would they find enough evidence to prove that I was a Christian? Amen. Well, but, Dale, here's the thing. See, they're going to bring you before the courts for things that appear not to be Christian. See, they're going to try. They're going to say, well, you did this and you did this, and, and you're going to say, well, yeah. Because my faith called me to do that, to say, yeah, but that was a violation of this, this, uh, this law. That 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 was a violation of this. Uh, what what do they call those laws that they put in cities? This ordinance. That was a violation of this ordinance. And we're going to look at the truth of Almighty God, and we're going to say, Lord, I couldn't follow that truth because I had this ordinance down here. I wasn't allowed to. Right, right. Read this here, Casey. Uh, you shall not step on the sidewalk within 100 feet of the Lord. I couldn't do it because I, I, I really wanted to, but they got that ordinance. And then they arrest me and they put me on TV and put my my uh, picture in the news. And then Christians sit back and say, oh, see, he, I knew it. I knew that was going to happen to him. He's been a rebel. And if he had just kept his mouth shut, it was, are you, anybody picking up what I'm laying down here? You don't see how the game's played? The hypocrisy, coach, is that we'll, we'll send money and Bibles over to China where it's illegal, and we applaud that. But here, we want to say, oh, no, if it's against the law. Are you kidding me? I don't yeah. preach the gospel out on the street because I have a constitutional right. I have a biblical mandate, to. It doesn't matter duty. what the laws say. I got a duty. I got a duty to do it. I got a duty. Jared, are you in the Isaiah 59? I think you are. 
I got to, I don't want Roger to get mad that we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about any Bible in the morning. Get the emails from those folks out there. Y'all, you just talk. I don't get them from Roger. You got, you just talk about that secular stuff. And what's that have to do with it? We need to, we need to get deeper with the Lord. Well, do it on your own time, dude. Read the Bible. Do it on your own time. Behold, the Lord's hand's not short and that it cannot save, and neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Do you understand this? Do you just understand that verse right there? Hey, fellas, listen. No matter what kind of mess you're in, the Lord can hear you. Huh? Amen. He, can, he, he, can, he, can, he can work miracles. Ask David Arthur. Yeah, he can, the Lord can work miracles. But, don't you hate those? But, <laughs> your sins have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Folks, there's a difference between can and will. It doesn't say he cannot hear. It says he will not hear. La, 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 la. Your hands are fine. Yeah. I got a little tagline. It goes slightly along with what you're saying. It's uh. You can you can ignore politics, but politics won't ignore you, brother. You can you can avoid them, but they will not avoid you. That's it, brother. So see, your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity, and your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Now I'm going to ask this because I I I'm telling you, I deal with this every day in my heart. Lord, how can I continue? to support a government that slaughters innocent babies. Can somebody give me an answer to that? I know that they're taking my money and they're doing their, I know they're killing babies. I know they're promoting homosexuality to our children. I know they're pulling off all, I, they're destroying marriage. I, I, Lord, I know that they're doing it with that money I give them. And every day, I'm not, I'm not making this up. This troubles me every day. Every day, every day, it troubles me. I know better. For me to know to do good and not to do it, to me it is sin. See, it doesn't say for me to know to do good and not to do it because there's a law against it. It doesn't say that. For me to do good and not to do it because the government says that I can't, I don't fly. Who do you serve? None call for justice. Justice. Wow, that's a hey Jared, there's a Webster's 1828. Don't do it right now. None call for justice or any plea for truth. Hey, when was the last time you pleaded for truth? When was the last time talking to me now? When was the last time that you were in the school board, local school board, pleading for truth? When was the last time your six foot icicle got off his cold dead butt? or out of his luxury car and went with you to the school board and pled for truth, to pled for truth to be taught to the children with your tax dollars. When's the last time that happened? Well, you're not going to do that because uh, then you guys will be marked as some type of cult and then people won't come to your church and then the finances will fall. You don't have to say amen. I'm walking all over today. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They, they conceive mischief. They bring forth iniquity. The point is, this is what the, the Lord, the, <laughs> the kings of this earth are doing all of this. And there is no opposition from the, those of us who claim the name of truth. None of Jared, go down to verse 8. There, the, the way of peace, they know not. By the way, don't skip 6 and 7 because it's good. I just couldn't read it without preaching. The way of peace, they don't know. There's no judgment in their goings. They've made them crooked paths. And whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. When you get involved with the government and the government courts, I'm going to tell you, boys, you will not know peace. I don't care which side of it you're on. You're just going to keep writing bigger checks to Roger Weaver. He's going to keep fighting in that ungodly system. And they're going to drain you. And at the end of the battle, you might be found not guilty, but you'll be broke. So what do we do? We cower. We just cower. Well, they'll come and take all my stuff. What ain't your stuff anyway? Verse 9, therefore, judgment is far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. How about that? Justice doesn't overtake us. We wait for light. <laughs> but behold, it's obscurity. We wait for brightness. But dudes, we're walking in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. 
We grope as if we have no eye. We stumble at noonday in the dead of the night. We're a desolate place as dead men. We all roar like bears and mourn like sword does. We look for judgment, but there is none for salvation, but it's far off from us. Why? Because we are cowering in fear of the criminal justice system. And can I say it one more time? The kings of the earth who set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you and our sins testify against us. For our, in, uh, for our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, hey, we know what they are. I'm paying taxes to a government that's murdering babies. They're using my money to kill babies. They're using my money to persecute Christians. They're using my money to do that. I know that. And transgressing, lying about against the law. Wow. Just saw that word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And transgressing and lying against the Lord. Not against me. Not against the church. And transgressing and lying against the Lord. Wow. And departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from their heart, uttering from their heart words of falsehood, fake news, Trump calls it, and judgments turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity justice <laughs> cannot enter. Yeah? Truth fails. That is unbelievable. Ponder that one. Truth fails. Why? And he that departed from evil makes himself a prey. You, you're going to be one of those guys who's going to stand up and call them out. You're making yourself a prey. They're going to come after you. The Lord saw it and displeased him that there was no judgment. No judgment. Hey, Coach. Yes, sir. You know, uh, I don't know. I was thinking about something you said earlier in Isaiah. You know, I don't. It talks about the sins and how it builds up to the point where God doesn't hear your prayers. Um, I I don't know if this is scriptural or not, but I know for me in the last few months, Lord's been really keen on me about repentance daily. Um, you know, I feel like repentance is like oil in your car. Mm. <laughs> you, know, you have this great car, great engine, but if you don't have the oil in it, it locks up and, you know, you have to get a new one. Got that's flush. the way I feel about repentance. I, I don't know if that's anything, but that's just something I've been thinking about and the Lord's really been dealing with me about is repentance just daily, just going through and maintaining a pure heart towards his things. Because sometimes you get in this world and you just get so clogged and polluted with the things of the world. And it's just, I don't know. That's just something I oh, thought boy. about. I just, yeah, oh, PayPal, I'll, I'll amen that. I'll amen that, brother. I'm there with you. I was sitting, I was sitting in my living room last night, and uh, our son, our, how old is he? He's 36, however he, old he is. Um, he brought he brought some, cl as, as some clothes around, and Michelle, his mother, uh, did the laundry for him. And last night as he was leaving, he's pulling, he's pulling his clothes be and had a little like, suitcase thing. He's pulling his clothes out. Going out the door, I said, hey, hey, hey. He looked at me. I said, did you tell your mom thanks? And he looked at me and says, yeah. But I don't think he did. And, you know, that's the way we are with the Lord, isn't it? We got all this, all these, Lord, I thank you today. I, Lord, I thank you they haven't, they haven't run me down yet. I, I thank you for another day, another life. Do you ever genuinely, Lord, I thank you that I woke up today and nobody in my family has cancer, Lord. I'm so Amen. grateful for that. Lord, I woke up this morning and everyone in my family is covered in the blood. And Lord Jesus, you're ordering our stuff. I'm so grateful for that today, Lord. Lord, I woke up this morning, Lord Jesus, and the things of this world have no draw on me. Lord, I'm so grateful for you and for your salvation. I can't thank you enough. Is that our attitude or is it? We have an attitude of, well, oh, oh, another day. Oh, I've got another day. Hey, just pray this morning. Oh, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. When, my, when Michelle, Michelle was gone for four days, when, when she came home, I just, I just wanted to embrace her and tell her how much I loved her and how much I missed her. You do that with the Lord? Are we so comfortable with the Lord we don't do that anymore? 
I don't know. Somebody come on in. I heard somebody try to get in. Hey, hey coach. Yeah. Luke 21, Luke 21, verses 12 through 19. Tomorrow I'm going before the, the judge. Uh -huh. And that's the verses that I have to rely on God. Let, let's read it. Hang on, we'll get it up. Jared, I'm sorry, Jared. Luke 21 versus what, Jeff? 12 through 19. 12 through 19. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. You know, Rusty and those 11 people who were arrested on Mother's Day, they're still dealing with those stinking courts. Still dealing with it. For what? Rusty saw babies being murdered, said, I'm going to go stand in the way. I'm not going to let those babies be murdered. And they're in court. They're in court. And Rusty's going to be able to say to the Lord, hey, Lord, listen, I, it cost me a lot, but I did it on your behalf. I stood up for you. Amen. Go ahead, Jeff. Luke 21, what did you say? Luke uh, 21, verse what, Jeff? <clears throat> I want him to be able, he was going to read it, and I cut him off. I, did we lose you, Jeff? 12 through 19, he said. 12 through 19. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, brothers and sisters, not to meditate before what you shall answer. <clears throat> for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all of your adversaries, hey, by the way, these seen guys in Psalm 2, that all of your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Hey, they, well, they can ignore it, but they can't deny it. The judge can overrule it. And you shall be betrayed both by parents, and brothers, and kinfolk, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus has got a wonderful plan for your life. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. And in your patience, wow, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Don't sell out. Don't sell out. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of of it depart out and let them not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Mm. Why are we afraid of men? You know, hey, hey, fellas, they're going, you're going to die and they're going to put you in a box and you're going to turn to dust. Including that beautiful house and car, big, big uh, bank account you have. Ain't going to be nothing. You give every cent you have. You get, you get yourself some sickness, you give every cent you have not to be sick. You know that's the truth. Go ahead, Vinny. Hey, did you hear about Liz Crokin? Liz Crokin did a fantastic presentation yesterday. She's been saying what I've been saying all along about, about this embargo, this media embargo on child trafficking. They just want, listen, if, if we had one channel we will be, we will mention child trafficking maybe every ten minutes because that's how often it happens. Right. And we hear nothing on the TV because there's embargo because the MSM is a propaganda arm of all these freaks. <clears throat> so Vinny, that's the point that I've been making. The yeah. reason for the crackdown is they know what's coming. Folks, that's the reason right. for the media crackdown is they know what's coming and they want to be able to control the narrative. And they can't. It's over. They can't. they can't. They can't. So they can, you know, listen. I, I was hearing Doug Hagman last night. We've invested. I'm talking, we. Pass this off. We've invested money into Jared, who's built a system where we cannot be shut down at CoachDaveLive.com. Now, yes, we can. Ultimately, somebody somewhere can pull a switch. Somebody can. But we've used some of the money that you folks have given towards this ministry to strengthen our platform so that it doesn't happen. 
Doug and Joe are doing the exact same thing. Alex Jones is doing the exact same thing. When this info war really breaks out, there aren't going to be independent places, very few independent places that you're going to be able to go. And that's one of the reasons that I have made a determination. I haven't told anybody else. We need to can Facebook. Every one of us need to get off of Facebook. First of all, we're feeding that beast. We're feeding these guys who are conspiring against us, right? They're making money off of us. Got it? And we need to find some other type of platform that we can move to. And somebody gave me one yesterday. I don't have it in front of me. It's the new, I hate this, Christian Facebook. But maybe that's the type of thing we need to move towards. Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we, maybe we need to shrug off YouTube and Facebook and Vimeo and Google and let them die their own death. Maybe we need to do that. We need to stop supporting them. Say, yeah, but I got 10,000 followers. So? So? What good, what good is it to you when they can pull a plug on you? When somebody in some place, some, some scallion somewhere can make a determination that what you said was not community standards and pull the plug on you. Hey, coach. Jared's got up on the, hang on a second. Jared's got up on the screen, social cross. I don't know what it is. I haven't really checked it out. I got some information on it yesterday. It is a new form of Facebook social cross. Is this where we ought to all move? Hey, shouldn't we just say to Facebook, ah, screw you, ah, YouTube, ah, instead of bowing our knee to them. Go ahead, David. I think it was you. It doesn't matter how many followers you have because, and, and like I said this the other day on my show, because the Lord gave it to me that Facebook is not the world. And so you could have 50,000 followers, but you only have a handful of people that actually see your posts. Your posts aren't being seen by the right. they are them. They're only being seen by the ones who feel the same way you do. So it's a it's it's actually a waste of time. And, and that's what I've been doing. I've been letting everybody know that we are leaving Facebook and they have so long. We're making the transition. We started yesterday. Um, just spend some time every day on socialcross.org, you know, or on Gab. Spend some time on these platforms and get to know them as well as you know Facebook. And then leave Facebook because don't wait for the Lord to direct you away from Facebook. Just shut it down. He may be sending you a message right now. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, Jared. And coach and you guys, listen, you guys, the internet is a product of the government. Okay. So if the government is against you, the internet is against you as well. And I'm talking about the whole, you know, I've been looking at it. I've been reading agreements on my ISPs. I've been reading these acceptable use policies. There is not a single layer of the internet infrastructure that will not shut you down for hate speech. Not a single layer. None of them. Nothing. So you guys got to understand it. <laughs> you got, it's, it's legal. It, it's, it's justice. It's just weights and measures they are unjust the weights and measures are unjust amen and we're and we're operating in this unjust system com compromising on what we uh, what we believe to fit into this system of unjust weights and measures by the way which the lord hates jared i threw it to you there i know somebody wants to get in and i feel you out there jared go down to the stuff i sent you 11 bible verses about unjust weights and measures 11 bible verses and what all we do is compromise. That's all we do. That's all we do is compromise to fit into the system. 11 and Bible verses. The Leviticus 19.35. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measuring of weight or capacity. You shall have just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 25. You shall not have in your bag different weights. And it's large and a small. Hillary Clinton versus me. Do you think Hillary and I have the same? Do you think we have the same criminal justice system? Hey, the entire federal government comes down on top of me and I hire Roger Weaver to fight. Do you think that's an ego? Is that a fair fight? Is that just systems of weights and measures? You're smarter than that. 
No offense, Roger. Thus saith the Lord God, enough, you princes of Israel. Put away violence and destruction and practice justice and righteousness. Stop your expropriation from my people. You shall have just balances, a just ephah and a just bath. Amos, hear ye this, ye who tremble the needy to do away with the humble of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, that we may open the wheat market to make the bushel smaller and the shekel bigger. They're doing that with all the food now, right? They aren't changing the food prices. They're making the bags smaller. It's going on everywhere and everywhere and everywhere. Why? And why is it going on? Because Christianity has lost its influence in the world. Let's just stand up and say it. Christianity has lost its influence in the world. The dollar ain't worth a hoot in hell. The dollar is not, the dollar is a piece of paper that isn't worth anything. And we work and we slave to exchange these pieces of paper that are only debt, are no good to us at all. And we continue to operate in that system. So we are going to come to a point, friends, where we are going to have to stand up and push back or we are going to be crushed. I don't care if Donald Trump's president for 480 years. Some of this stuff ain't going to change. I saw today Paul Manafort in that court, 93% of people who go to federal court, 93% lose. Is that, you, you call that justice? You call that justice? When Dr. Ken Hovind got set free down in Pensacola, Florida, it was the first, uh, not, no, let me get this right. It was the first case the government lost in that courtroom in nine years. No defendant in nine years had ever won in a federal court in Pensacola, Florida. The hey, Lord hey. hates it. Yes, hey. come on in. Yeah. Hey, the chat. Well, I just wanted to tell you that no prosecutor brings a case that they think they can, can't win. None of them do. No. Well, of course, across the country, they're all that they're all up with that that way, or they won't bring it. Or, J or Ch Chad, how about this one? Listen, I don't care about Paul Manafort. I, I, I'm telling you, I couldn't care less about Paul. You know, they charge him with 18. Hey, they charge him with 18 crimes. Do you know he was found not guilty on 10 of the 18? When, when you go into court, see, they don't they don't just get you for uh, stealing, or what whatever it would be, whatever use misuse of funds. They get you for failure to pay taxes, uh, lying on a on a government form, lying to process. They just they line up all of these things and they bring it through there and they throw them on the table and now, well, they only won ten of them. And in the meantime, even if Manafort had won, he what did, what does he want? <laughs> what does he want? Folks, that ain't that ain't what that ain't the way it's supposed to operate. That is not the way it's supposed to operate. And what I found out and what I saw happen in the in the Ken Hovind trial, are you ready for this? The judge, the prosecutor, and the public defender that Ken Hovind pay, had, all three of them, judge, prosecutor, public defender, were all paid by the government. Ken Hovind's public defender was paid by the government. Now, I want to ask you this. What type of fair trial do you think this public pretender gave Ken Hovind? And this public defender, if he has to choose between a government paycheck or defending Ken Hovind, what do you think he's going to do? And it was only intervention of outside attorneys that even turned this case. It was a miraculous move of God. Now, <clears throat> your children are living under that system. Every one of you, are you ready? You hear me? You better hear me. They turn a battery of attorneys loose on you and you're a felon. They'll find it. especially. If they could go back 30 years, what if they could dig into your life and go back 30 years that the Lord said it's under the blood, something you did 30 years ago, and the attorneys are able to go in and get government to pay them to go in and dig into your background and look for anything you might have done. Somebody tell me, how does Trump, how does Trump defend himself against that? How do you defend yourself against that? And if it's not something that you want done to you, why would you want it done to somebody else? That's unjust weights and measures. And if they're going to do that to President Trump, why aren't they doing it to Hillary Clinton? See, that's unjust weights and measures. The Lord hates that. He hates it. And folks, the only ones going to stand up against it are God-fearing people going to stand up and say, that's wrong. You can't do that. And we cower and we won't do it. Hey, Coach. Hey, pardon me.
This is a hell of a show. Huh? This is this is getting to the truth. Come on in, brother. Coach. Hey, um, what a glorious day. We're getting ready, me and Al America. We're getting ready to go down and preach the gospel. Of I'm going to set us to school, a great inventor. We're going to go preach the gospel. Hey, hey, Coach, you know, I've been reading in First and Second Kings and, and Chronicles, and what we're doing in the United States, we're repeating exactly what ancient Israel did. I'd encourage everyone to go read what they did in those days because there's only one way out, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ and becoming obedient to him. And if we don't do that, we're just going to repeat what history has repeated. What we're not learning from. <clears throat> Amen, George. Amen. Folks, listen, I'm, I'm, you, you guys think I'm crazy. I mean, I don't care if you do. There's not a night that I lay down in my bed that I don't wonder, is this the last one? Is somebody going to come surround my house and kick down my door? Is, is, is that is this my last one? So I, you know, I make a I'm, I make a choice just like you guys make a choice. I make people mad because I go where they don't want you to go. See, if I had a church and we were feeding the poor and we were just preaching love, 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 and obey the government, if I had a church doing that, nobody would have any trouble with me. But if I have a ministry and I'm going out and I'm speaking against that homosexual beast, I'm speaking against that abortion beast. I'm speaking against that government beast. That's picking a fight. Picking a fight. And sadly, the reality of picking that fight is you make yourself vulnerable. That's what the lady in the email said to me yesterday. That coach, you are so brave. Well, I'm a soldier of the cross. I'm a soldier. Pastor Dale said, cowards go first. How can I be a soldier and be a coward? Remember the guy down at the school shootings in Florida where they showed the deputy sheriff hiding in the stairwell? And everybody poked fun at him, said he ought to lose his job. They ought to throw him in jail. Why? Well, he's no different than me and you. When the crap hit the fan, he hid. Somebody say amen. Amen, brother. And that's how they do it. And that's how they manipulate it. That's how it is. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm, 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 listen, I'm going to tell you this. When the government comes in and they throw that net, you ain't wiggling off that hook. I'm just telling you. You ain't going to wiggle off that hook. And they're going to come and they're going to do that to a lot of people to shut up everybody else because nobody wants that to happen. Go ahead, Vinny. I just want to say we have to, one thing we have to do in, in, in addition to everything that we talk about, we have to have tort reform here in, the, in this country. We have to have it so... We can't have these frivolous, frivolous lawsuits that destroy that destroy us. The law's an ass, Benny. That's what's you know what I mean, brother? The law's an ass. The law. Jared, yeah. go, to, go to Webster's. I'm sorry. I, look, Benny, I got a couple minutes. Go to Webster's, Jared. Put up justice. Go well, up Dave, to... one, of the, one of the things, too, we talk about just laws and all that kind of stuff. You know, we already have just laws, and we're not saying anything about it. We already tolerate. If our politicians' lips are moving, how do you know if they're lying? Their lips are moving. See, we tolerate that. We do. And that's we why it continues to happen, and it's getting worse. Because as long as we're distracted, we have a cell phone, we have air conditioning, we got our kids have PlayStation or whatever, and, you know, NFL is on for Pete's sake. You know, it's football. See, uh, you know, we have our distractions. We're okay. As long as, hey, it's okay. As, long as our hey, mailbox check. isn't dented. What's with, oh, <laughs> what, what's with us, man? <clears throat> When's the last time you went into some church and you heard some six foot icicle go up there and tell you how good, how uh, loving homosexuality is? When's the last time you and some of your buddies went up and drug that guy's butt right out of the pulpit? Drug him right out of the pulpit. When's the last time? That's why we're in that, the mess. Man. That would be glorious, brother. I That's what has to happen. Look That's what has to happen. Yeah. Huh? That's what has to happen. There's no fealty, loyalty to the Lord. Justice, according to Webster's Dictionary, is the virtue which consists in giving to everyone what is his due. Practical conformity to the laws, the principles of restitute in the dealings of men with each other. Honesty, integrity in commerce or mutual intercourse. Justice is distributive or commutative. Let's go down to number two. 
impartiality, equal distribution of right in expressing opinions, fair representation of facts respecting merit or demerit. In criticism, narrations, history, or discourse, it is a duty to do justice to every man. Free equity, agreeableness to right, as he proved justice for his claim, vindictive retribution, merited punishment. Sooner or later, justice overtakes the criminal. Right application of equity, his arm, his arm will do him justice. Now, Jared, pull up there real quickly because I'm running out of time here. Where, where did I send it? Can I find it? The Sixth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Sixth Amendment. All these, all this, giving people 18 charges and, and then never going to court and doing plea bargains and reducing it down. Next one, Jared, down right below it, right down below it. The Sixth Amendment says this, in criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy trial. Speedy trial, not months and months of litigation and, and all that stuff we go through and paying lawyers. No, no, speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law to be informed of the nature of the cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in favor, to have the assistance of counsel for his defense, and a jury of his peers. And a jury of my peers, I'm gonna tell you this is so critical, when I go into a jury, there should be people who are my peers. If I'm going to be tried, I should be tried by Christians, not non-Christians. Non-Christians are not my peers, folks. They're not my peers. Atheists are not my peers. Speedy trial, not months and months and months of litigation drawn out with deposition. No, 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 no. Hey, this ain't that hard to do, huh? Get a guy up on the witness stand, make him tell the truth, and put me up on the witness stand, and let me tell the truth, and then let, let my peers decide whether or not I'm guilty or innocent. And let's get on with it. What a racket our criminal justice system has become. I'm out of time. God bless you. We'll get some rest. I'll come back cooler tomorrow. We got a lot of work we got to do. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.